Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on our next project here. This is gonna be a personal project for myself to use, something that has been on my mind for well over a year, something I've been wanting to build, and we've just never gotten around to uh, starting this one. I've been doing other jobs, other projects. So I'd like to go ahead and dedicate some time and get started on this project and uh, get it moving, and hopefully we're gonna have a nice functional uh, tool whenever this is uh, over with. So what I'm wanting to build is one of those uh, truck hitch cranes. You can find these things uh, for sale. There's, our, there's a few people that, that sell these, you know. Uh, I think they're around the $250, $300 range, so it's something that you can easily buy yourself. But I had uh, materials here, including a lift that I wanted to utilize to make this for myself, so that's what we're gonna do. I have scavenged the shop, found some materials that I think will work. It's gonna be a little bit heavy, a little bit heavy duty for what we're building. But as I said, this is all stuff that I had here at the shop, so that's what we're going to uh, utilize. So uh, we'll go outside here in just a sec so you can see what it is I'm talking about, the, uh, the old cherry picker that we're going to be using uh, for the crane part of this. And then what we have here, this, like I said, this is all the materials that I have scavenged around the shop that I think is going to work for what it is that I'm wanting to do. Uh, they are a little bit on the heavy side, but I think that's going to be okay. It's going to be a fun, fun project, and there's going to be a lot of machining and uh, even some welding and fab involved with this as well. All right, so got some two and a half tubing right here. This is uh, some three inch tubing. Um, some more tubing here, tubing, and then we've got a piece of 1045. This is an old hydraulic rod. We're going to be using this for uh, a through shaft. And then I've got a piece of 4140 right here. It looks like some six inch maybe. We're going to be using this to make a flange with a bolt pattern there as well. This is some nylon, some stuff I had for a long time. I had my name on it because it, I used to have this at my uh, previous job and I wanted to keep up with it, but I brought it home. And then so this is what I'm going to use for a bushing. Okay, I wanted something that you don't necessarily have to worry about lubrication or, or anything. I, I think this will work good since it's going to be like an outdoorsy type of uh, tool to use. All right, so I think that's it for the material here. You know, I may end up coming into some need for maybe something else here along the way, but you know, we'll just cross that bridge when we get there. So let's go outside and check out the uh, cherry picker. All right, so we got the pickup and then we have this old cherry picker right here. I've had this thing for years. I think I've had it since, I don't know, around 2004 or five-ish, somewhere around there. It still works, but my longtime viewers of the channel will know that I've, I've got a love-hate relationship with this thing right here. It's cheap, made in China, but it did the job. It was never fabricated to be nice and straight, so it always kind of uh, leaned to one side, and those casters on there absolutely just suck. They, they're horrible. So anyway, I stopped using that because I just picked up this cheap one from Harbor Freight using a coupon. Those things are cheap enough right there. It's kind of stuff, it's really hard to build it whenever you can go down there and buy it for, you know, 100, 150 bucks or whatever it is for these things. So we're gonna use this. Uh, so I'm going to unbolt the, the center part of this off of the base right there and this piece right here is what we're going to be using for the crane. The rest of it is just going to be leftover scrap material. All right. I might even see about taking this hydraulic cylinder apart and maybe putting some fresh seals in there. It still works. I mean, it just looks rusty and crusty, but it still works. Maybe put a new wiper in there, a new piston seal, and uh, you know, put some new seals in this valve right here. Anyway, just get it kind of updated whenever we go into it, and I'll probably clean it and paint it. So what we're gonna do is have a piece that comes out of the hitch right here. All right, it's gonna come out. There's gonna be a cross tube. That three inch piece of tube's gonna sit right here. And we're gonna have another tube that slides through that that will actually overhang and the crane portion will actually sit right here. I'm going to have this. Let me move this back a little bit. This is going to be designed so the crane will actually sit out here in this area. So it will clear the tailgate. All right. Uh, and it'll be reversible. So you can either use it on this side or that side, whichever one makes sense uh, to use it on. And you should be able to pick something up with it out here in this area be able to pick something up with it and set it in the back of the truck or somewhere else a trailer whatever so that's the uh that's the idea behind it anyway right there all right this will be a uh, useful tool 
for even around here for me if I need to pick something up. When, when you got to pick something up that really requires two people to pick up, that's a little heavy and awkward, that's where this is going to come into play. I'm not going to be using this to pick up mill of machines and heavy machinery. It just for things like say a generator or maybe there's a big piece of wood that you need to pick up, you know, a tree stump or something like that and to put it on your truck or your trailer. That's where this is going to come into play as well. It's also portable. So if you need to go somewhere and you know you got to lift something up that's going to be heavy, you can disassemble it, put it in the back of the truck, go out to wherever you go and put it back together and uh, do your lift that you need. So that's the idea behind it. Uh, I've watched a couple videos on YouTube in the past of other guys that have built these and they seem to be uh, extremely useful. So that's the project. Let's go ahead and get started on it. All right, before we get started on our machine work, I thought I would show you this. I haven't shown any barbecue in a while on the channel. So I've got my big offset smoker uh, cooking. I've got a slab of uh, beef short ribs and also I had a pack of uh, baby back ribs that I needed to uh, cook or freeze. So. I've actually got both of those on the smoker today. And I'm going to be sharing some of this barbecue with the family. We're using uh, pecan wood. Got a little stack there uh, waiting to go. Sirens are out loud and proud today. Got some nice uh, clear bluish smoke coming out of the uh, stack right there. And we're, I've been trying to maintain right around 275 or so. It's doing real good. I'll give you a peek at them. Oh yeah, so there's our beef ribs and our and our pork ribs. Looking good. That's going to be dinner today. First thing that we're going to start with is getting our tubes trimmed to the right length. This was a just a random length here. I'm I'm making it an even 18 inches instead of what it was and trimming these welds off the end of there as well. All right, so this is our two and a half inch tube. This is the one that's gonna slide through the piece that we just cut right here. And uh, it'll be kind of like this right here. You know, this is gonna be uh, slipped into the receiver of the truck. This piece slides into that one right there. And so what I did is I took some measurements. I put the uh, cherry picker out here outside in the corner of the truck and I got a rough measurement. It's about three foot what we need from the center of the hitch out here to where the crane's gonna be. So what I did is I just rounded up, I went an extra foot. We're gonna cut it four foot long, plus half the length of this. So once you stick this in there, this will be all the way through this piece right here. But the thing is, is that it'll be adjustable. So if we need to you know, slide it in a little bit and get the crane portion a little bit closer to where the tailgate's gonna be, or the back of the truck, we can do that because it's just gonna be a slip fit through this tube right here. I'll have some kind of, I'll maybe I'll put some kind of lock on this where you can just really quickly just lock it to keep it from moving around. Uh, and then that's it. So, and if we need to, we can always just trim this again if it's a little bit too long. So 57 inches is what we, what we measured it out at and what we're gonna cut it at. Just go ahead and double check it, 57. All right, last piece of uh, tubing to cut here. This is gonna piece that's, this is the part that is gonna slip into the receiver on the truck and your uh, large three inch tube will be welded out here. I'm gonna cut it 16 inches long. It's probably gonna be just a little bit longer than we need, but if I need to, I can trim this. But all we're gonna be doing is just drilling maybe a couple holes in here for the pin to go through. And there's plenty of clearance behind the hitch for this to slide through. It's just uh, hard to kind of gauge exactly where it needs to be until we start assembling this and finding out where the, um, the, the crane itself is gonna be positioned, you know, in or out 
uh, from the truck. All right, we'll do a little mock-up here so you can kind of get a little better idea of what we're doing. I plan on putting some of this in the evapor rust to get rid of some of this rust overnight. So this is the piece that will go into the hitch right here, just be a T-shaped piece welded on. And then this right here is gonna be the piece that slips through here, just like so. We'll, we'll probably just have a lock screw somewhere on here uh, to, to snug that up. All right, these two pieces of tubing right here, those are gonna be cut as well. I don't know, I don't have the length yet. I gotta wait on that. And then this smaller piece of tube right here is actually gonna fit inside of this one, just like so. And this is gonna serve as the foot that's gonna go down and touch the ground. Um, so we'll have like a, we'll have a hole drilled in here with a pin so that this is adjustable and it actually holds up the weight on the outer end right there. But I'm gonna go ahead and take these pieces. This piece is gonna be too long right here to fit in my tank, but all the other pieces I can fit in there, I'm gonna go ahead and evapor rust them overnight and go ahead and get the rust off. And then tomorrow, I'm gonna start welding these guys together. Do some drilling. We'll do some drilling first where we need to. Um, and then we'll do our welding and then start, start fitting this thing on the truck. But as this stuff is soaking in the evapor rust, I'm gonna bring the, uh, the old cherry picker inside and start disassembling it, getting it into pieces. Right here at the evapor rust tank. Thermometer that I keep in here just to see what temperature it's at. Definitely works better when it's warm. I should be able to come out here tomorrow and pull these out and basically just hose this stuff off. And it'll have, it'll have all that rust off these pieces right there and that'll make it nice for welding and whenever we clean it up for our paint as well. So we'll just let these soak. Probably, uh, they'll be in here for probably about 18 hours or so. I'm gonna pull them out more. All right, I've got the uh, engine lift all taken apart there. I didn't want to bore you with that. It's just a, just a matter of a few bolts there that you take out. And it, and it all came apart really good, surprisingly. It's been together for, I don't know, well over 15, 16 years or so, sitting outside. So I'll save that, because that's actually some usable material, like this tubing right here. You know, I'll save that just to have some scrap material to use. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, anyway, these are the parts that we're salvaging to reuse. I am going to treat these to some evapor rust also. Probably go ahead and set that handle off uh, in there today and let that be uh, soaking. So this is going to be your main column right here that's going to bolt down. So my plan is I'm going to cut this plate off. We're just going to cut those welds, cut that off. And it's going to be a round plate that's going to get welded onto this. So this is what I've got that will actually get the job done without me having to go and buy some more material somewhere. I had a smaller piece. It's four and a half, but I think four and a half is going to be too small. So what I'd like to do is actually just try to set this in the bandsaw and cut two discs out of this. And we'll have one that will be welded to the bottom of that column right there and then maybe another one that will be welded to the shaft. And that's what this piece is gonna be for. This is gonna get turned down though. This is just, this is what I had. So I just wanted to use this for the shaft material. And this will be welded to one of these flanges right here. That way I can at least take one of them, chuck in the lathe and kind of face it off nice and uh, flat there and just have it so that that will just sit down onto this and uh, bolt to it, you know, maybe have I don't know, six hole pattern on there. That's my thinking right there. This is all just in my head. I haven't, uh, I haven't like drawn this out or anything. It's different to what I've seen other people do. And uh, I think it's gonna work. I'll, like I said, I'm gonna use the nylon as the bushing material right there. I don't think it'll have to be lubricated. Maybe just spray some penetrating oil in there when we go to use it. And um, that, that should work pretty good right there. So. That's where we're at. 
and uh, I'm going to come back out here tomorrow and uh, start the fab work on and get some of this framing completed. Okay, we've got the engine lift all taken apart here. This, these are the parts that we're going to be using. That right there, we're not going to be using any of that except for the handle, of course. But uh, this is still this is some good tubing right here. So I might just end up taking those off and just putting them in the old rack outside and then scrapping the base. But a little bit of scrap metal there. These flat bar, we'll save that. Put that on the rack. could be used for something else. All right, so this is going to be the main column right here. And what I'm planning on doing is cutting this flange off where it was mounted on there. We'll, we'll cut the welds, knock that plate off there, and then we're going to weld a new one that's going to be round to this end right here. And my thoughts was to kind of help keep some of the weight down, what I might do, that's what this piece of 4140 is for. It's the best piece I've got in the shop to do what I'm trying to do. I've got a piece that's four and a half. I think it's going to be too small. So I think we're just going to go with the six inch 4140 and probably see if I can cut two discs out of this right here. I don't want to use all that, it's just too much. We'll see if we can cut two out of that in the bandsaw. And then one, my idea is that both of them will be drilled for a hole pattern, probably like a six hole pattern. And then one will be welded to the end of the column right there. And then the other one is going to be welded on to the end of the, the shaft that we're going to machine that's going to fit down into the, the tube that's in the uh, vapor rust now. That's gonna be this, this is gonna be the pin. We're gonna just turn it. It's not gonna be this whole thing. It's just gonna be a section of it turned down. We'll bore this bushing so that it'll, the pin will slide down through this nylon right there and that'll be your bushing for the, uh, for the column. So that's the idea that I got anyway. Uh, I haven't seen anybody how they built theirs, but this is just what I got on hand and this is probably what we're gonna do to uh, get this job done. So. I'll come back out here in the morning and uh, start on the um, probably welding up the tubes after I get them out of the evapor rust and clean them off. It's the next morning. The weather feels so good out here. We had a little front move through, kind of moved some of the humidity out of the air. It cooled it down. This is the perfect weather to be having all the doors open in the shop and getting some work done. So anyway, let's uh, check out our uh, piece of material that we have in our evapor rust bath. See if we can uh, pull something out of here and see how it looks. It feels like the big heavy sucker. Everything's everything's big and heavy in here. Oh yeah, there's the there's the uh, two and a half inch tube. You see how nice it looks. Got every bit of that rust off there. What I'll do is just put them out here in the grass. And we'll just hose them off. Everything should just kind of hose right on off of there. Let's see if we can find something else in here to grab. There's our big piece of pipe or tubing. I think this was actually, uh, this right here was actually a piece of pipe is what this was. Let's see if we can get it out of here. Yeah, that looks good. And see that stuff just brushes right on off there. Just take the hose and rinse it off. So let me get the rest of them out here and then I'll show you how they all look. A little closer look at the uh, tubes after the evaporus soak. Stuff always does a great job. Just a very easy, hassle-free way to get rid of a lot of rust. This piece of pipe right here specifically was very, very flaky. I mean, you can kind of see the pitting in there from it where it's been sitting outside all for years, really is where it's been plus on the inside so anyway these are nice and clean right now we just got to do some uh, deburring of all the sharp ends and we'll start our we'll start our fabrication process
what we're doing, we've got these two pads that we cut and face, just some cold rolled, and I'm gonna weld those onto this tube somewhere in that area. We're gonna have a couple of lock screws using these uh, stainless steel bolts right here. So this is the one that's going in the hitch, but it's the same size that's gonna go through here. So once we slide this piece in, it's gonna be attaching to the crane. We can slide this in, whatever we need to, and be able to just hand tighten up these bolts right here on both sides, just to uh, kind of keep them snug and uh, keep the tube from flopping around. I've got this piece of half inch bar stock right here, some half inch round that we will cut and uh, round the ends nicely, make them nice and smooth, and actually just weld them onto those bolts right there. Just make a uh, little, a little T-handle bolt, locking bolt for that right there. So we'll weld those on and then go to the mill, drill them and uh, tap them. And by the way, these are just something that I had. These are five eighths. I didn't want them this big, but these were the type of bolts I was looking for. Something stainless steel won't rust. And that's all I could find that would work. It was, it was acting like it didn't want to weld there. I don't know what's going on. I know for sure that stuff has got to be cold rolled. I'm going to keep welding that side. And see if it welds up. I don't know. Some corrosion on there. Something causing it to uh, not act like the way it should. That looks fine. That'd be good. Try to make a nice weld and it's got to screw up on you.
We're set up with the flex arm here using a, uh, this is the OSG High Pro Tap 5 8 11. Get some oil going. I didn't notice it. That bolt's got a little burr on it right there. All right, we got our piece of two and a half that's going to go into the hitch here. Not critical on where this is going to be. I'm just making sure that it goes all the way through right about there. We'll just transfer the whole location. Transfer punch here, 4164. Give it a little cap and then that'll get a little bit right there. So we'll just drill a hole. After that hole is drilled, we can go ahead and weld our other piece to this. There's our nicely drilled and deburred hole. There we go. All right, that part's done. So now it's time to go ahead and let's go weld this in here. All right, we got our piece uh, squared up, ready to do some welding. I wanted to point out we've got our we're using our fireball tools. We got the mag uh, magnetic shims underneath using a quarter inch. Two and a half inch tube, three inch, three inch tube that easily allows it to be centered up there on uh, equally on both sides there. And of course, we're using our the mini mega square there. All right. And then one thing I wanted to point out is uh, I went up to Westco today. That's our welding supply. And I picked up a brand new flow meter for the Millermatic 251. I think I've got an issue. I think I've got a gas flow issue that's been happening for a little while, but whenever I was welding these guys on right here, I noticed that the worm tracks and the little pinholes in the welds are getting worse, especially that one right there. The weld's fine, but it just, it doesn't look pretty and it looks ugly and it makes it look like you're doing something wrong. But I think it's a poor, it was a poor gas issue. So I got the new flow meter and I didn't check the fitting that I needed uh, before I went up there. And of course the, um, the tapped hole in the bottom is the is the wrong size for at least the fitting on that's on this uh, flow meter right here. Now this is a uh, pressure regulator, and I believe this is for argon, but this is the one that was sold to us back in '98 when we hooked this Millermatic up, and that's what we've always run. So I'm wondering if I've got a gas flow issue. But what I did is I took this apart, I purged it good, and I put it back together. And I started doing some test welds with it to see if it would actually improve anything. And I got this old piece of steel here and I ran a lot of beads over that and I didn't have any problems with it. It's doing, a, it's doing better than it was. I don't know if maybe I had a clog in the line and it wasn't allowing the gas to come through properly or what the heck is going on. But 
Uh, I am gonna go back up the west coast. They got fittings and make sure I get the right one for this. And we're gonna put this uh, Miller Smith flow meter on the uh, Miller and, and get to using that. But I've got everything clean. We've dressed everything with our flap disc on both pieces right there. So it's not a cleanliness issue. Same thing with this. This is not dirty. Everything was dry. I think it's a gas flow issue is what I've been having with it. So hopefully when I get this guy hooked up, it's gonna cure that. But so far, uh, since purging it out and hooking it back up, it seems to be working fine. So I'm not really sure exactly what the issue is, but that is a problem that I've been having. So anyway, I wanna go ahead and get this guy uh, welded up now. What I'll do is just tack it really heavy on four corners, and then uh, we'll probably put one weld bead on it and remove the clamps, weld the other side. In case I forgot to mention, I am using dual shield for this. And we've got everything ready to go. That's looking good so far. Better than what I was uh, dealing with before. I slipped on that one using my finger to hold the gun and it kind of slipped. So I got a little divot in that one. I can do a little bit better on these two here. Couple of little worm tracks in there that don't go all the way through. Yeah, still got a little bit of a worm track issue going on. That one there looks really nice. All right, we got her, we got her welded up. So one of the questions and comments that you will often see anytime you mention flux core or dual shield welding is, is uh, why that over solid wire welding, over solid wire MIG welding? And I'm going to give you my opinion on this. I mentioned this before in other videos, but you know, let's go ahead and touch base on it on this video because it's going to be mentioned and there's a lot of opinions out there. And I'm not saying that anybody's opinion or experience is wrong. I'm just going to tell you my take on the on a dual shield. For one, I think it's a superior weld process when you compare it to a solid wire MIG weld. You're gonna have better penetration, you're gonna have a better deposition rate as well. When you set the perimeter of the machine right, if you need a nice large fat weld, depending on the spec, you can really pour it in there with a flux core wire, all right? And you get great penetration. This right here is very similar to welding with a 7018 stick electrode, which to me is you know, some of the best welding you can do right there, 7018. Uh, strong, and it makes a nice pretty bead, and it's tried and true, has been for decades. So anyway, if you've got material like this structural steel, and you don't have the time to clean it, not every job site is perfect out there where you expect people to go out there with grinders and grind mill scale off of big pieces of plate or I-beam or channel or even tubing like this. The guys are out there having to build stuff and get it done. You don't have time to grind every bit of mill scale off. So you go out there with a flux core or dual shield or a 7018 and it blows right through it and it makes a great weld that's strong, it's penetrated, and you know it's gonna hold. You can't, I won't say you can't, but you're just not gonna get the same kind of weld if you're using a solid wire and you're trying to adjust the machine up to kind of you know, burn in uh, thick material. But what I want to tell you 
is the rule of thumb that was given to me by Buddy. He used to work for Air Gas, and this was a while back whenever, um, when I first got the machine. I think it was around 1998, because it was before I actually went to the welding school. And Buddy came over, and uh, we set the machine up. He gave me some uh, you know, crash courses on how to do it, how, how the processes work, and he set me up with solid wire and dual shield wire, okay? And he told me, here's your general rule of thumb, okay? Your general rule of thumb. When you're trying to decide what, which one should I use, this is how I do it. If you're welding material that's a quarter inch or thicker, go with dual shield. If you're welding material that's, that's thinner than a quarter inch, use your solid wire. So solid wire is excellent for structural steels like this tubing things like that, you know, handrails. But if you're gonna do something that you want really some high strength and high quality welds, and you're gonna be going over quarter inch, consider the dual shield. So flux core wire with gas, and I use 7525. A lot of people run straight CO2. We've always done the mixed gas, and I've never had a reason to switch over. Uh, which are, I heard that CO2 actually will, will create a, uh, a hotter weld, a better penetrating weld but the 7525 is, is excellent. You can't go wrong with it. So that's my general rule of thumb that I've always lived by whenever I'm trying to decide uh, which one I want, but I like the weld control and the weld penetration and even the way it looks better than a solid wire weld, okay? So that's my, that's my little take on it. Everybody's gonna have their opinion and what they think is better. Uh, I just wanted to mention that since we're on the subject of dual shield welding. All right. All right, let's go ahead and give this uh, piece, this weldment here. We'll give it our first fit up, should I say, with the other piece that's going to go through here. So anytime we use this, that's exactly what we'll do. I do have the cotter pin, but there's no need putting it on. So you'll just stick this in there, stick the pin. That's ready to go. This is going to be, this piece of tubing here is going to be the piece that the uh, crane is going to be fitting into the, the engine lift. So it'll, it's going to slide through here just like that, just like so. As I had mentioned before, we can either cut this or just leave it. There's really no reason to cut it. And this can be adjusted a little bit in or out if we need to. Of course, we got our our little hand screws that we're going to be um, taking up for that right there. I think that's going to work out pretty good. So I can just adjust this where I want. And then we're going to have a big piece of tube that's welded right here. It's going to have your bushing inside there. And then we're going to have the, uh, the engine crane, the hydraulic part of it, that's going to slip down into this right here. Okay. And then underneath we'll have a, uh, a foot that's adjustable so that it will support the weight right here. Once you stick it in there, we'll drop the foot down, stick the pin in, and then it'll be sitting straight down on the ground like that. So I think that's going to, uh, that's going to work out pretty good. I think that's going to be it for now. So I'm going to go ahead and start moving on towards the next phase of the project we're going to we're going to do a cope on this so that we can uh, weld it to our piece of tubing i think that's tubing that i got in there and we'll go ahead and start working on this section of this beam right here next all right